Rabbits, bunnies, buns. Loaves of bread for those in the know. However you describe them, they're living, breathing, stuffed animals that are probably one of the most misunderstood and mistreated pets on this planet. To help you, whether you're already a bun parent or thinking of becoming a bun parent, we're going to share five ways to make your pet bunny happy. And please, if you know someone who can treat their bun better, please share this video. Tip number one, do not cage your rabbit. Yes, we're starting with the first and most important tip because we care that you actually do this. So if you don't make it to the end of this video, at least remember this, and above all else, do not cage your rabbit. Like you or I and most animals, rabbits are meant to walk, roam, explore, and enjoy their lives. Let's break this down. Most human beings who work office jobs and still have to go into their physical offices hate working there, especially if they have to work from cubicles. Why? Because there's no space or freedom to move as you please. You're locked in, like a caged animal. While you're typing away at a computer for 7 out of 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, you would probably rather be taking a walk, enjoying a coffee outside, or even stretched out on your sofa. The point isn't about what you would rather be doing, but about not having the choice to do it when you would like to. Well, rabbits want to do the same thing. They want to, and deserve to have, space to stretch out, binky, do a zoomy, and just explore their space, in exactly the same way you or I like to walk around our neighborhood. It's not uncommon for some rabbit owners or would-be rabbit owners to claim rabbits are boring pets. 99% of the time, the same people who claim that are caging their rabbits. When rabbits only have enough space to pee, poop, sleep, and eat, guess what? That's what they'll do because they don't have the space and freedom to do all their natural fun behaviors and just as importantly, to bond with you by sitting next to you or on your lap or eating from your hand or nudging you to pet their heads. So please, if you don't get anything else out of this video, do not cage your rabbit. Let them roam free around your apartment or in a room of your house. You'll have a happy and loving rabbit. Tip number two. Two is better than one if you can afford it. Please keep in mind that tip number two is only if you can afford it, both in terms of money and time. Tip number two is to get your pet rabbit a companion because rabbits are extremely social. Rabbits are hardwired to operate in at least a pair and will immediately establish a hierarchical dynamic where one is the dominant bun and the other the more subservient bun. Regardless, they will thrive with a companion they bond with. Of course, we do provide our pet rabbits with company and vice versa, but we're also different species, so there's a limit to our communication and dynamic. Getting another rabbit for your solo rabbit will be worth all the effort. Besides money and time, the biggest hurdle is bonding your rabbits. It can be worrying and stressful at times with the initial possible fighting, hair pulling, and suspicion. The length of the bonding process is different for every pair or trio of rabbits. In my case, my initial pair bonded within a day. When I introduced a third rabbit a year later, it took about a week and my first rabbit, who was the reigning queen, did not enjoy the process at all. But after that week, the three musketeers became inseparable, just as the initial couple did. Like rabbits who are part of the same group or fluffle out in the wild do, bonded pet rabbits will sleep, eat, drink water, binky, zoomy, and stretch out together. My rabbits in particular love to cuddle with and groom each other. It's a heartwarming experience to see every day. Tip number three, play with your buns. You get what you give. Tip number three seems obvious. You probably got a pet rabbit to have a companion. But sadly, many pet rabbits, especially those who are caged, are often ignored, except for feeding and cleaning times. It's what usually leads to people having the impression that pet rabbits are no fun, dull even. For anyone who's free roaming or not caging their pet rabbit, you likely already know that it's complete garbage. When you sit or lie down on the floor near your bun, he or she will hop on over to check you out. If you two already have a close bond, they'll nibble or headbutt you for attention. You can also play catch with them with chew sticks or fill an empty shoebox with shredded paper. Fun fact, rabbits are born diggers. They love to dig and forage and will have a blast with that DIY toy. Tossing plastic rings and stacking cups 
and cardboard toilet paper tubes is most rabbits' idea of a perfect play date as well. Super outgoing buns like to sit or lie down on their owner. Ultimately, like with most healthy relationships, you get what you give. The more you make an effort to get to know your bun and let your bun get to know you, the happier both of you will be. Tip number four is to give your buns natural treats in moderation. What do we mean by natural? Well, not pellets, which are the pet store's equivalent of a candy bar. In other words, totally unhealthy, highly processed, and prone to making you overweight. Within the rabbit parents community, there can be fierce debate about whether pellets are a healthy and natural treat. Our take on it is, in most cases, no. Most rabbit pellets are hay, which rabbits should eat as 99% of their diet. But with unnecessary processed bi-grain products like wheat millings or soybean hullings, aka fillers, and molasses, aka sugar, with so many other options to treat your rabbit to, why choose this pet store money trap? Instead, we recommend giving your rabbit a handful of washed spinach or kale daily as a supplement to their mostly hay diet. Every other day, we recommend treating your rabbit to a small and thin slice of carrot, banana, apple, or a blueberry or raspberry. Notice what all these treats have in common? Well, they're healthy for you and your rabbit, in moderation. If your rabbits are anything like mine, they'll start sniffing rapidly and dash over to you as soon as they even hear the rustling of a plastic salad bag. The same goes for the smell of carrots, bananas, apples, and most fruits, really. But please also remember, when in doubt, use Google to double-check trustworthy sites about what rabbits can and can't eat. It'll take a few minutes at most, but it can save your rabbit's life and a lot of potential heartache and expenses for you. Tip number five, keep them and their space clean. Our fifth and final tip seems like a no-brainer, but it's important to be proactive and consistent about keeping both your pet rabbit and their space clean. That's whether it's your entire apartment or home or a room in your home. As any bun parent knows, buns are messy eaters, and so are many humans. It kind of comes with the territory. After all, they eat hay. It gets scattered on the floor and sometimes on our clothes, but it's also very fast and easy to sweep up. When you free roam your rabbit, it's important to remain committed to keeping the space fundamentally neat and clean. Rabbits are smart. For the most part, they're like people. Just like you probably wouldn't eat urine-soaked food unless you had absolutely no other choice, rabbits don't like to eat soiled hay and you shouldn't put them in a position where they have to. We all have to work and have social lives that include our rabbits and many other personalities in and outside of the home. Nonetheless, it's essential to sweep, vacuum, and wipe the floors down with non-bleach products. It makes for a hygienic and clean home for you and your rabbit. And when we mention keeping your rabbit clean, we absolutely do not mean giving your rabbit a shower or a bath. Please do not do that. In fact, it can kill them due to the shock. Rabbits, like cats, clean themselves throughout the day. Sometimes they do need a helping hand, especially if they're a lady rabbit with a dewlap. When they're drinking out of their water bowl, their dewlap can get wet and get green or otherwise discolored from then eating hay. Wipe it down with a paper towel, tissue, or clean toilet paper. A clean rabbit is likely a healthy rabbit. A healthy rabbit is the first step towards a happy rabbit. We thank you for watching and hope that these tips help you and your bun enjoy life better together. Stay tuned for our next video.